Welcome to r slash true off my chest, where OP gleefully destroys the life of his cheating wife. Our next Reddit post is from Admirable Explorer. Back in February, my newlywed wife went away for a week to see her family and friends, which we had moved across the country from for her fellowship. I didn't come with her because I was having my paid time off to cash out and help fund our next move, which would have been last month. And I also needed some dental work done and I couldn't delay it anymore. While she was staying with her family, she called me. I could sense something off in her voice, so I asked her what was wrong. She told me how unhappy and alone she'd felt since we moved. She said that I felt more like a roommate and that I'd ruined her fellowship for her because I didn't care for the area that we were living in. It's a very high cost of living area. I felt incredibly guilty hearing this. We had only been married for five months, together for six years, and living with each other for four and a half years. And she was already suggesting marriage counseling. I didn't protest. I was eager to work things out because I adored and loved her very much. Over the next several weeks, I was planning activities for us every weekend, on top of doing all the cooking and cleaning in the apartment, even though I was the one who had always done this before. We had our first marriage counseling session, and my wife said she feared that maybe we were just too different or incompatible. Hearing this felt like a gut punch. Where was this concern prior to us moving and getting married? Then, sometime later, we went out for a long walk after work and some drinks. She told me she was feeling better about things, and I felt a huge sigh of relief. The next day we went out for breakfast, then spent the rest of the day car shopping until we found something that we liked. After that, I took her out to a very nice restaurant for dinner. From there, we went to the hot tub and we passionately hugged. I felt like we were starting to improve. Then, the next day. I will never forget that day. I woke up early, and despite the last few days seemingly going well, I still didn't feel like things were quite right. When my wife had told me two months prior that she was unhappy, I confided this to my mother. My mother's first comment to me was, there might be someone in her office. I didn't want to believe that, but it was always in the back of my head. I was up early, as I mentioned, and my curiosity got the best of me, so I checked her phone. Sure enough, there was someone from her office. Someone she was texting minutes after we passionately hugged. Someone she had been sending nudes to, meeting up with, and planning future dates with. I was crushed. But then, I exploded. For the last several weeks, I had been beaten down thinking that I was the cause of the relationship falling apart. Only to find out that her affair began coincidentally a few days before I received her phone call from her parents' house. I woke her up and asked her, what the F is this? At this point, I just needed to unload. I called her every name in the book to break her down and to hurt her. I then called her affair partner, but he didn't pick up. So I left him some threatening messages about beating him up and exposing them in the office. He was a subordinate of hers and engaged himself. Maybe his fiance would like to know. At this point, I felt I just needed to leave. I told her she needs to figure out what she wants because she crossed the line. I went back home, but before I did, she asked me to continue counseling remotely so that we could repair things. I still foolishly loved her and agreed. Over the next several weeks in counseling, it became evident that she wasn't taking any accountability. She harped on the hateful things that I said to her after my discovery, and how my threats to her affair partner made her view me as potentially violent, and this made her afraid of me. This is despite me never laying a hand on anyone in my life, something she knew. I wanted her to agree to an intensive marriage retreat weekend after her fellowship ended. As we were discussing this, a coworker of hers texted me. He asked me if I knew that my wife was cheating on me. It turns out the affair never stopped, and my separation allowed it to turn into a full-blown relationship. Everyone in the office knew, but they were hesitant to tell me. She was still parading around work, talking about me like I was still living with her and everything was well. I had obviously discovered the affair two months prior, but now I knew that I was just being strung along. For what? That I don't know. At that point, I'd had it. I took all the evidence I'd saved up and sent it to her HR department after calling them. I knew the email addresses of several of her coworkers and CC'd them. I sent the naughtiest stuff to her parents, siblings, best friend, and mutual friends. And best of all, the HR department of her next employer. 
I let her file for divorce because I knew that would be the end result of my revenge campaign. It's something I should have done in April anyways. From what I'm told, she was terminated from her fellowship and the job that she was supposed to start this month. Apparently, she's also emotionally distraught due to me humiliating her to family and friends, as well as destroying her reputation in the short term. And you know what? It makes me happy. I'm glad she's been humiliated, and I only wish that I could inflict more pain on her. Man, I really don't understand the logic of cheaters. Obviously, she doesn't want to be with you. Obviously, she wants to be with the other guy. So why lie and, like, struggle through marriage counseling? Why not just break up? What's the goal? What's the objective? Is it to just string OP along until he can't take it anymore and then he breaks up with her so she can take the high road and say, Oh, boo-hoo, woe is me. My husband left me because he's so hard to please. I don't know. I really can't come up with a reason. This lady makes no sense. Our next Reddit post is from Snoodaz. I'm a 24-year-old woman, and I've been dating my boyfriend, Andrew, who's 26 for five years now. We've had a healthy and stable relationship, up until today. Andrew has always been a prankster and makes jokes with me all the time, and I do it to him too, but today, he took it way too far. This morning, he woke me up at 7am and said that he wanted to take me to the spa. I was pretty surprised because it wasn't a special day or anything, but I was all for it. At the spa, he told me that he wanted to go to a fancy restaurant afterwards and that he was paying. Of course I agreed because we hadn't been out together in a long time. We then got to the restaurant and we had a beautiful and romantic dinner and just a nice time in general. We were even talking about a house that we wanted to move into. After around 40 minutes, Andrew stood up, got on his knees, and took a box out of his pocket. My heart stopped beating. I hadn't even predicted this. We have never talked about proposing before, but I also thought that it was a great time now. He did a speech about how I was the most beautiful girl in the world, and how he wanted to live with me forever and ended with, Will you marry me, my princess? Of course I said yes! Seconds later, all that excitement turned to horror. He opened the small box that I expected would have a ring in it, and it was just a note saying, You've been pranked, and Andrew started laughing hysterically. He continued with, Baby, this is just a prank. I'm not ready at all to marry you yet. He leaned in to hug me, but I gave him the biggest slap ever with tears streaming down my face. I just told him, We're over, you effing scumbag. I'm now sitting in my bed crying and writing this because I don't know what to do. He's been texting and calling me, but I haven't responded because I feel so sad, betrayed, and mostly angry. I thought this was going to be one of the best days of my life. What should I do? What should you do, OP? You already did it. You slapped him and broke up with him. There's a prank and then there's just cruelty. Not only is this an extremely embarrassing and cruel prank, but also because he fake proposed to you and you accepted and then he rejected you, that sort of gives him the power in the relationship, right? So, it sucks this happened after five years of dating, but honestly, this guy did you a favor because he showed his true colors now instead of, who knows, five years down the road. Clearly, this guy doesn't respect you, so the sooner you realize that and leave the relationship, the better. Our next Reddit post is from Active Compote. I can't believe how effing stupid you are. I was having brunch with your effing mother, which you knew about because I told you that morning when you text me saying that you have reservations at my favorite restaurant all of a sudden. I love that place, but it's a pretty long drive and it's pricey, so the last time we were there was for our three-year dating anniversary. So of course your mother thinks you're going to propose. Your older brother just got married, your younger sister is engaged, everyone's just waiting for us to get engaged and has been nudging us about it. So the day comes, and even your mother texts me, hope to hear the good news, and honestly, I thought that you were going to propose too. I would have been okay with it, and I would have said yes. But no, you effing piece of garbage. You took me to my favorite restaurant to tell me that you cheated on me with your coworker that you said I had nothing to worry about. That B word that you called just your work wife. You kept saying that it was just a one-time mistake, that you want to make things work. I don't want to make things work. I hate you and your work wife. Go work marry her instead. 
Now I'm fielding effing messages from all of your relatives looking for news because your mother was so certain that it was going to be a proposal that she told everyone about our dinner date. Meeting you was the greatest regret of my life. And the only thing I'll miss is that your family, for all their faults, were genuinely loving and good people that I enjoyed having in my life. I won't miss you. Yo, what a jerk! Why do you have to take the restaurant down with them? <laughs> I just thought of a dumb joke. Babe, I took you to your favorite restaurant to get you your favorite meal. You know, the one you love so much. That super tasty dish. Hmm, super tasty dish. You know, you could abbreviate that to STD, and that reminds me, babe, you should probably get tested for STDs because I cheated on you. Our next Reddit post is from Stale Ham Sandwich. I'm a 25-year-old woman and my husband is 26. Last night, my husband gave me his phone so I could put in my order since we're getting Chinese. I know his password and we each have free access to the other's phone, but I never really checked his phone. While I was putting my order in, a message from someone on Reddit came up and I thought that I was going to have a panic attack. I knew that my husband used Reddit, but I didn't know what he was doing on Reddit. I clicked on the message and saw the back and forth between him and this other woman. The messages were intimate and he was asking for more photos, if you get what I mean. I looked further and saw that my husband was in numerous not safe for work groups dedicated to other women's spicy pictures. The woman whose message came up wasn't the only woman he had been messaging as well. Upon further inspection of his Reddit account, I found his posts in marriage groups where he's lying about our relationship and our child. He made one post talking about how I don't let him talk to his female best friend who's like a sister. But my husband doesn't even have a female best friend that I even know about. My husband also lies about our four-year-old daughter, stating that she often disrespects him and clearly favors her other parent over him. Our daughter is the sweetest little girl whose form of disrespect is usually just saying duh after a sentence which she learned from him. I'm currently eight months pregnant with our second child and I feel numb. I don't know how I could have missed my husband messaging multiple women behind my back for who knows how long. I showed him what I found after he asked me if I decided what I wanted to eat and he had this deer in headlights look. He cried and said that he just does things sometimes and doesn't remember doing them. I feel like that's the most ridiculous excuse that he could have possibly given. And it's honestly more respectful to me that he thinks I'm dumb enough to simply think that he just doesn't remember. I slept in my daughter's room last night and he's currently at work. I know there was no physical cheating involved, but I just don't feel like I can ever truly trust him again. If he hid this, I can't help but wonder what else he's hidden. Okay, Hopi posted an update where it seems like she went into false labor so she had to go to the hospital, and then she continues. My husband came to the hospital yesterday a little bit after I made that small update. He brought flowers and a card, and he tried to comfort me, but I had a panic attack. The nurse ended up asking him to leave so I could calm down. I just felt overwhelmed. My mom and brother showed up and my brother took my daughter to their hotel so that she could get some sleep on a bed that wasn't a hospital bed. My mom is currently with me, but I've decided to have her go to the hotel soon so that she can also get some rest. My blood pressure is still really high, so I may be having the baby tonight. My husband has been sending me texts, and when my mom goes to sleep, I'm going to tell him to come to the hospital so that we can have a conversation. I have a lot of questions. My anger has turned to just straight despair, and I think that I'm going to mention marriage counseling along with individual counseling for him. In a text, he said that he does remember doing them and that he was embarrassed. He stated that he's satisfied in our marriage and that he likes the attention he gets from making the posts that lied about our family. Oh man, that is just the lamest excuse. This guy's really trying to go all Walter White Breaking Bad. I don't know, it was just a fugue state, babe. You know, man, I'm thinking about it. This might sound crazy to say. Maybe it is crazy to say, but I almost feel like him making posts lying about his family is worse than the emotional cheating. Because on some degree, I can understand the logic behind a man emotionally cheating because you're talking to pretty girls, you're trading sexy photos. There's like a logic to it. You know, you can understand the reason. The reason is that he's horny and he likes attention from women. But why is this guy fantasizing? He's, fant he's literally fantasizing about having a sucky family. He's role playing that his wife is terrible to him and that his daughter sucks. 
What? Why? I'm trying to imagine if my wife was trading sexy photos with a man, that would really sting. But I would understand the reason is because she craves attention and she's horny or whatever. But if she's bad mouthing me to strangers and making up lies just to make me look bad, just to get attention from strangers on Reddit, that's messed up. That's disrespecting me just to disrespect me. I mean, both are bad. Both are in deal breaker territory. It's just, man, that feels awful to think about. I don't know, guys. What do you think? What's worse? Your partner trading sexy photos with strangers on the internet or your partner making up lies about you and the child you have together to make both of you look bad to strangers on the internet? Let me know down in the comments. That was r slash Drew off my chest. And if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.